Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll share our ideas for how to stylishly decorate the tabletops and other horizontal surfaces in your home. <laughs> We've already covered interior design a couple of times in the past on the channel, because if there's one thing we enjoy almost as much as classic menswear, it's luxuriating in a classically designed space. You can find our first video on classic interior design here, and for a slightly more modern twist, covering things like mid-century modern designs, you can go here. Those two videos, however, did focus principally on furniture. Today, we're going to turn our attention toward both functional and decorative objects that rest on tabletops. And by tabletops, we simply mean horizontal surfaces like coffee tables, ottomans, side tables, shelves, and mantelpieces. With that said, though, we're intentionally not covering setting a dining room table or using a desk as a workspace. If those are the kinds of videos you'd like for us to do in the future, just let us know in the comments below, and we can add more installments to this series. Also, unlike furniture, which can be quite expensive, tabletop decor is rarely going to break the bank. But it can still have considerable influence over the look and feel of your space, and it's a great way to change an interior's overall character without having to do a large-scale remodel or renovation. So, as we mentioned, we're going to cover both functional and purely decorative tabletop decor today, and we'll start with the functional pieces, first by shedding some light on the subject with lamps. Simply by providing lighting, lamps are massively going to impact the mood and character of a space. Unlike floor lamps, which are generally going to provide light to the majority of a room, tabletop lamps are going to be smaller and will focus their light more on a specific area of a room. As for where they're used, you might immediately think of bedside lamps, but by utilizing side tables, you can use a lamp like this in almost any part of a room. Lamps like these can look good alone, perhaps complementing some of the other decor elements, or as a pair, adding symmetry and order to a space. When it comes to styling, many different types of lamps are specifically associated with a particular era of design. As examples, you could think of ornamented brass lamps for the fin de siècle, which is to say the end of the 19th century, Victorian lamps with their luxurious shades, or the iconic Luxo L1 lamp, emblematic of the modern tabletop lamp, and evidently harboring a hatred of the letter I. You can integrate lamps into the design style of a room, and perhaps even find a coordinating floor lamp and tabletop lamp, or intentionally select an odd lamp for an unexpected spark or to break up an otherwise staid composition. And speaking of the unexpected, novelty lamps were particularly popular in the mid to late 20th century to inject a bit of lightheartedness and whimsy into the design of a room. Now, there's only one other design element that can hold a candle to lamps, and that would be candles and candle holders. These are extremely versatile because they come in a wide range of both sizes and styles. To provide gentle illumination and a warm presence, you could, for example, consider a set of tea candles. Or conversely, as a commanding statement piece, you could go with a fully decorated candelabrum. In general, candle holders with simple designs made from things like crystal, metal, especially silver or black, or stone, can look good on any surface in your space because they're neutral and unobtrusive. And conversely, heavily detailed or large candle holders made from things like gold or brass, colorful porcelain, or colorful glass may be too overpowering for central positions and tend to be better suited in peripheral spaces. Many candle holders, especially candelabra, come as pairs, and like lamps, a paired set can look pleasing. 
Don't be afraid to decorate with a single candelabrum, though. Just make sure that it's acting as the center of attention so nobody thinks you misplaced its mate. Or that the culprit was Professor Preston in the dining room with the candlestick. Next up, it's time for us to discuss clocks. Of course, your phone may have a clock built right into it, but we guarantee that that's not going to look quite as stylish as the examples we'll show here. Mantle clocks come in a variety of styles, and while they do look great on mantles, they also work on a variety of other surfaces, like shelves, bookcases, and of course, tabletops. Clocks like these, though, often have limited visual appeal from the sides and rear, so you'll typically want to position them against a wall or other surface. For a clock with aesthetic appeal from any angle, you could consider an exposed works anniversary clock with a globe or a pedestal clock. Many pedestal clocks in particular are sufficiently visually stimulating to command pretty much any position in a room. Specialty tabletop clocks can also add unique personality, like the rugged look of a ship's clock or the retro chic appeal of a mid-century modern alarm clock. Next up, if you own a coffee table, then you'll be hard pressed to find a better complement than the coffee table book. Traditionally, coffee table books were laid out by considerate hosts so that guests could amuse themselves or to more generally inspire conversation. Carefully curating your selection will keep your guests engaged, so put out books on a variety of subjects. Also, you'll want to rotate them regularly between gatherings. Any of the top 10 style books that Raphael covers in this video would be great choices for your coffee table, but remember that you aren't limited to men's fashion books here. You can find books on a wide variety of subjects, anything from the architecture of your local area, to masks of the Venetian carnival, to schematics of ships from the Star Wars universe. You know, I never will understand why the forward guns on the Executor class Star Dreadnought weren't better arranged. After all, it's a simple matter. Honestly, it isn't that difficult to understand that relying entirely I mean, overall, I guess what I'm saying is that I just hope someone at the Kuat Drive Yards got fired over this. <clears throat> okay, where were we? Uh, anyway, contrary to the name, coffee table books don't have to go exclusively on coffee tables. Rather, you'll be best served by laying out these kinds of books wherever people need entertaining. As examples, you could think of a dresser in a guest bedroom or an ottoman in a library. And purely for display purposes, a large stack with the biggest book on the bottom and smallest on top will look aesthetically pleasing and show off your many reading options. Coasting right into our next stop, let's discuss coasters. Now, if you've got furniture in your home made from materials like wood or certain kinds of stone, and you enjoy cold drinks, we hope that you're already using coasters to prevent rings, stains, or other types of damage. Wow! Who put this cup right on the new table? I was having coffee. I put it on the coffee table. You didn't use a coaster, Jerry. You left a stain. <laughs> But coasters are more than just functional. They're also a great way to display your style and taste while still protecting your furniture. Classic coasters are typically subdued and made from a range of materials like crystal, wood, leather, metal, and stone. You could also consider more exotic materials like geodes or animal horn. And as mass printing becomes ever more cost-effective, it's possible now to find coasters with things like scenes from the countryside, classic fashion illustrations, or fine art. Whatever you choose, just make sure that your coasters are made from durable materials that can get wet. After all, cork is a good choice that meets these criteria, but cardboard is just going to get soggy and wear out. And to ensure that you and your guests will always have coasters when you need them, put them out in areas where gathering will occur or near where drinks are being served. Okay, Preston, you can do this. You've made a pun for every object so far. Um, ah, 
When it comes to swapping out tabletop decoration, I wouldn't trade anything for a good tray. Nailed it. Serving trays may be intended to move objects from one room to another, but if you choose a stylish tray, it will look equally good if you simply leave it at its destination. Trays can be employed to indicate an area where beverages are waiting for your guests, or to hold useful items like toiletries or towels in a guest bathroom. They can also help to break up bland negative space on large surfaces without making it look cluttered. You can even place trays under some of the items we've already discussed, like clocks or candlesticks. Consider using trays to create contrast, like putting out a metal tray on a wooden piece of furniture, or a light stone tray on dark wood. And with that, let's transition from things you put things on to things you put things into, because I've got a tidbit to say about tidbit trays. Unlike many purpose-intended receptacles, like fruit bowls, for instance, tidbit trays are catch-all items that can help you to get organized in any space in your home. They can be the ideal location for your keys in your entryway, for instance, or in the bedroom they can hold the contents of your pockets or your jewelry items like cufflinks while you're undressing. We'd highly recommend selecting a tidbit tray that looks good whether something is in it or not, and as we mentioned with coasters, natural horn is a great choice for this. Horn is a lightweight and durable product with a unique color and pattern all its own. Some of the best horn comes from water buffalo, and we use sustainably sourced water buffalo horns for our tidbit trays from Fort Belvedere. And at six inches in length, they're a good size to accommodate whatever small belongings you need without being unwieldy. <sighs> now, where did I put my phone? Oh, there it is. Right where I left it. So, we're discussing phones next, but not that kind of phone. While many businesses do still utilize landlines, homeowners are increasingly moving away from landline phone service exclusively to cell phones, so the corded telephone seems to be going the way of the dinosaur. Even so, a unique telephone really can set a room apart. A mid-century telephone, for instance, will exude domestic bliss and homey elegance, and a tasteful reproduction telephone will definitely be a conversation starter. And, of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't also mention some of the iconic novelty telephone designs, like the Hot Lips, Mickey Mouse telephone, and, of course, the Bat Phone. Yes, hi, Batman. Uh, can I be your new sidekick? I'm sick of only solving fashion-related crimes. Batman. Well, there goes that career change. Of course, you don't actually need to have a landline phone that works in order to display it in your home. If you like the look of a particular model of phone, you can simply put it in your space as a work of art or as a decorative reminder of times past. All right, glad we didn't have to phone it in for that section either. That wraps up the section of the video on functional objects, so now let's get into those that are purely decorative. First, when it comes to adding color to a space, we're going to vase the music and plant ourselves firmly in the camp of vases and plants. Plants add color and a lush, healthy feel to any space, so if you have a green thumb, or even if you don't, putting plants on your tabletops will instantly add life and vibrancy. Just make sure you position your plants according to their light needs. After all, if you've got a plant that needs quite a bit of sunlight, it won't be the best choice for your dark, secluded study. Of course, you could always opt for artificial greenery, as we've done here in the Gentleman's Gazette studios, or skip the flowers entirely and just display the vase. Decorative vases, or vases, are long-established fixtures in tastefully decorated homes, appearing on mantelpieces, shelves, end tables, and any other flat surface that could use a unique pop. A useful aspect of the vase is that it can be appreciated from any angle, so it works equally well in corners, peripheries, or the center of the room. 
Vases have been made in classical styles, Renaissance revival styles, empire styles, modern styles, surrealism styles, and even the meta-surrealism style as evidenced by this vase that looks like Salvador Dali. No matter your personal style then, there's likely going to be a vase that will complement it well. The image of that Salvador Dali vase is stuck in my head, so let's try to bust it out of there and discuss busts. Any kind of sculpture, from figurines to statuettes, will look good on any type of tabletop. But busts are standout items that will really attract attention. And contrary to what you might assume, they can be found for fairly reasonable prices at antique shops or vintage stores. Copies of famous works of art are also a good option if you enjoy the original pieces. Most busts are intended to be viewed from the front, though, so keep this in mind when selecting your location. And now we'll frame our discussion of decorative items by concluding with picture frames. Framed photographs will allow you to share your memories and experiences with visitors and show off what you value in your life. Frames can be made from a wide variety of materials, but for a classically styled frame, we would recommend dark wood, gilt, crystal, or metallics. And consider suiting the amount of decorative detail on the frame to the character of the scene. For example, a simple frame for a casual family scene, or a more ornate frame for a special occasion. Obviously, there are countless objects with which you can decorate the tabletops in your home, and we were never going to be able to cover all of them in one video. So, we'll conclude here with a plethora of objects that we feel can enliven any space while also providing a refined and classic feel. Most of these are antiques that did serve a function once, but are now largely decorative, and others fall into the general knickknacks category, but in either case, I think I've got a knickknack for listing them out. You could try an antique inkwell, which is fun even if you've never used a quill pen. A censer, which is like a candle, only smokier and gives off considerably less light. A duck decoy, which should hopefully be much more comfortable sitting on your shelf than out floating in a pond. A model ship, at least until you can afford a real yacht. Liquor bottles and decanters, because after all, given that that Louis XIII cognac set you back a pretty penny, you might as well get more decorative use out of it. Powder horns to keep your powder dry in style. Bell jar taxidermy, which may not be to everyone's taste, but certainly is unique. Music boxes, which are a show for the eyes and ears. Toy soldiers, which can add whimsy to a room and harken back to your youth when you could never have enough toys. And a large black figure of a bird. Surely you know what this is. Harry. What is it? The uh, stuff that dreams are made of. In conclusion then, we hope that this video will inspire you to think creatively about how you decorate the tabletop surfaces in your home. If you've got ideas for other great objects, put them in the comments below, and as before, let us know if you'd like to see future installments in this series, as we do have more ideas for objects, and I've certainly got more puns. No! No, God, please, no! In today's video, I'm wearing a casual ensemble good for spending some time around the house and admiring the tabletop design features therein. The central element is my cashmere v-neck sweater in a purple or berry color. And to harmonize directly with the sweater, I'm wearing a shirt from Charles Tirrett in a lilac color and in a small houndstooth pattern they call puppy tooth. The shirt does have French cuffs, but I've got them configured in a barrel style with simple black links to more easily fit under the sweater sleeves. Grounding the outfit are my trousers and socks, which are both in plain black and a simple black pair of penny loafers from Allen Edmonds. And to fit in with the berry and black color feel, I'm also wearing a black grenadine tie from Fort Belvedere. 
You can find this tie, as well as a wide variety of other men's accessories, and a few things like our horn tidbit tray, in the Fort Belvedere shop here. <laughs>